How do? It's the Yorkshire Gamer. So today I'm actually in India. I'm working in India and I thought, you know what? We're going to have a look at the Ambernic RG405V. This is a great little handheld that's just come out and it supports PS2, GameCube, Wii and 3DS. So without further ado, let's check this bad boy out. Hey up me old muckers, how we doing? So yeah, today we're looking at the RG405V. So I was very, very fortunate to get hold of one of these. And uh, this is from Ambernick Selected. So many thanks to them for providing me with a sample uh, for this video. So the purpose of this video is to show you exactly what you get in the box, how it functions, how it operates, and uh, yeah, some little tips and tricks for you to take away. So first things first, you get a screen protector and some wipes, uh, which is all, all very good and very useful. Um, you also get a USB-C cable, uh, which is used to charge this device. Uh, if you do charge the device, make sure you use this cable, uh, because there are rumors that if you use a laptop charger, for example, it will blow the battery. You also get some instructions, which come in English and Chinese. So now for the main event, so let's have a look at this bad boy. Uh, first impressions, this is massive. This is a really big handheld compared to the vertical handhelds that Ambernick has done in the past. So I was really surprised at just how big this is. Uh, it comes in three colours, so I went for the grey one, but it does also come in wood grain and transparent purple, so it looks a bit like, a, like an N64. But yeah, look at it, it looks great. It reminds me so much of a Game Boy, especially with those purple buttons. So the button layout on this is pretty much identical. The ergonomics are really good, so it's good for holding. It does come with a built-in fan, and this is so you can play the likes of PS2, GameCube, Wii, and 3DS without the, the handheld getting overheated. You get a port for your headphones if you still use the wired ones, but bear in mind this does come with Bluetooth as well, so you can connect some wireless headphones to this, as well as additional wireless controllers. Overall, the size and feel of this device is actually really comfortable. I'm actually quite surprised at how good this feels in my hands. But I do appreciate it's quite difficult to gauge exactly how big this device is, so here it is alongside the Ambernic RG353V. So the RG353V comes with a 3 inch display whereas the 405V comes with a 4 inch display. You can see straight away just how big this is, so it's got a couple of centimetres on the top, maybe a couple on the side as well. Um, thinness is about the same, um, yeah, but yeah, this is probably the best way to show you just how big this device is. So for me, the RG405V is a bit more comfortable to play with. You get less cramp because it's just bigger. The 353V does come with a HDMI port, whereas the 405V does not. So in terms of specs, the RG353V comes with 2GB of RAM, uh, but the 405V comes with 4GB of RAM, meaning that it will play PS2, GameCube, Wii and 3DS, which the 353V will not. So there's only two other Ambernic devices that I'm aware of that share the same specs uh, as the RG405V, which is the Ambernic RG505, which is this one in the plastic shell, and also the Ambernic RG405M, which comes in a, a metal casing. So the biggest difference with these two additional handhelds are that these are horizontal, so shaped similar to a PSP. Uh, but yeah, obviously the 405V is vertical. Um, the 405M comes with a 4-inch display, the same as this one, and the 505 actually comes with a 5-inch display. So now that we're done looking at the outside of the device and comparing it to other Ambernic handhelds, let's turn this on and I'm going to show you exactly how to set this up so you can play every single game that will come on the SD card. So when you first turn it on, you will be greeted by the Ambernic logo and a little chime. Uh, but then it's going to ask you to select a language. So it'll give you the option of English or Chinese. So I chose English. 
This is going to take a few minutes for it to set set up. Um, I think for me it took about three or four minutes. Uh, but as soon as it has completed doing what it's doing, it will ask you to tap the screen. So go ahead and do that. So once it's done that, you will be greeted by the home screen. Uh, so first things first, I'm going to turn the brightness up uh, because it is a bit dark. Uh, but as you can see, this is fully touchscreen. So it does make your gaming experience uh, a little more adventurous. Ultimately, this is an Android device, so you're going to have all of these Android apps for your ROMs. You're going to have Moonlight and the Play Store, so you can download your, your apps to, to this as well. You're going to get some additional tools. Um, but yeah, the first thing that we need to do here is we need to actually uh, set up the SD card. So you will get a notification asking you to set this up. So what you need to do, uh, you scroll down and select this option at the bottom. So you want to use the SD card for external storage. It'll ask you if you're sure, click OK, and that's it. It's going to set itself up. So once the SD card has been set up, uh, what you need to do next is click this button here. So this will actually bring up the built-in uh, emulators. So basically we need to tell the device where the games are on the SD card. So, yeah, click that button. Again, it's going to take a few minutes because this is the first time it's ever had to do this. But once it's done, it will greet you to the screen. And then you'll get this pop-up. All this message is saying is that it needs to finish configuring its system. So it needs to finish installing RetroArch. So go ahead and click Continue and then click OK on this part here. And then click Allow to say that it can read the SD card. This will literally take a few seconds. And then once it's done that, you can then quit RetroArch and then it should take you back to the screen that you were originally on. Now that we're back on this screen, uh, what we need to do is press and hold X for a few seconds. So by doing this, uh, once you release it, you will get a pop-up just saying, can I read the SD card? Yes, click continue. Again, it's going to take a few minutes. Uh, just for it to read all of the games that are on the SD card. Uh, but once it's completed that, that will be it. You can then access all of the games that are on the SD card using the built-in uh, emulators. Overall, I think there's about 20 plus emulators on here, um, which does include N64, Dreamcast, PlayStation, Neo Geo Pocket, uh, Fireburn, Game Boy Advance, PSP, Wii and 3DS. So once you've finished on here, you can literally just press that button again and it will take you back to the Android screen. So now I'm going to show you how to set up the PS2. So go ahead and click on that uh, app in the top corner. Then click add file directory and then it's going to search within the internal storage of the 405V. Uh, and as you'll probably notice, there's not a PS2 folder there. So what you actually need to do is hit those three lines and then go to the SD card. Then from there, you should see a folder that says PS2. So go ahead and click on that. And then click Add Directory and Allow. So that'll take a few seconds. And uh, once it's done that, there you go. It's got all the games there uh, and these should be able to be played straight away. So there are a couple of extra things that you might find useful uh, when playing the PS2. Um, so what I'll do, I'll bring up Kingdom Hearts 2. As you can see on the screen, you do have the button display layout, so you can actually use the touchscreen if you really want to. Um, but what's the point when you've actually got buttons on the device that you can use? So uh, first of all, I'm going to show you how to remove that from uh, from the screen. So first, you want to press that big black button in the middle, and then click on the controller tab on the top uh, right of the screen. Go ahead to touchscreen and then click on this top one and select none and that will literally just take all of the the, uh, the control displays off of the screen there we go there's actually quite a lot of things that you can do with this device uh, so you can customize the settings however you wish so if you find a game that it, you know that, that's not playing too well you can play around with the settings uh, in here so you can change the emulator uh, the frame rate and things like that. All I would suggest though is if you're going to mess around with the settings is just make a note of what settings it currently is on um, 
just so you don't forget because there's nothing worse than changing the settings on the device and then not being able to put it back. But yeah, let's have a look at some gameplay. So as you can see, it's not lagging. Uh, the audio is not crackling or anything like that. So it's actually playing it really well. Um, considering it's a PS2 game on a handheld, uh, it's, it's, quite, it's quite amazing. What's really good about this as well, though, you can literally save the game anywhere and you get more than one slot. Uh, so you don't have to wait till you finish a boss or a level or got to a checkpoint. You can literally save this anywhere you want and load it whenever you want as well. So now that we've looked at the PS2 and how to set that up, let's go ahead and look at how we set up the GameCube. So what you want to do is click this button, uh, sorry, this app here uh, next to the PS2, uh, and then click allow on this just to say that you're happy for it to, to read the SD card. And as you can see, there's three, uh, three options. So you've got GameCube, Wii, and WiiWare. But go ahead and click that plus button in the bottom corner. Uh, and then again we need to go to the SD card so we're going to go ahead and click on that and then I believe the folder will be called Wii slash GC or Wii and GC so go ahead and click on that and then use directory and allow and the good thing about this particular app is once you've connected to Wi-Fi it will actually download the artwork for these games as well so something that I do always recommend is if there is a version of the game that you want that's available on PS2 or GameCube, then I would always recommend getting the GameCube version just because it just seems to run better on these devices. So a good example is Simpsons Hit and Run. So that was released on the PS2 and the GameCube. Um, PS2 is a bit choppy, a bit laggy, but on the GameCube it's flawless. So that's a, a good tip for you there. So now that we know how to set up the GameCube and Wii, uh, what we can do now is set up the 3DS. So click on that app, again, and directory. Again, make sure you're on the SD card, and then simply click on the 3DS folder. Hit that, use directory, and allow. And that's it. So this one came with six, um, six games, but yeah, that's, that's literally how you do it. Nice and easy. So those are the, the three main ones that you really need to set up. Uh, so here's a bit of gameplay from the GameCube, uh, Sonic Heroes, just so you can see how well it actually runs. It's actually really good. Um, I was quite surprised at how well it, it runs GameCube, but yeah, as I say, if you've got the option of PS2 or GameCube for a game, then just go with the GameCube one. I suppose the last thing to talk about is probably just these options here. So you do have the option to um, connect to Wi-Fi, you've got Bluetooth, um, you've got this for your fan. So if you feel like your device is overheating, uh, I believe there's three speeds altogether uh, and this will help to cool the device down uh, using this fan on the back, which I've never seen on, on one of these handhelds before. So it's a little strange. I'm not sure how often I'll use it, but uh, yeah, it's there just in case. Uh, you've also got the option to change your controller from, um, uh, you know, like an Xbox controller to, to switch. There we go. Uh, you do also get screencasting as well, so you can connect this to a, a, a Wi-Fi enabled TV. Um, so yeah, overall, this is a really good device. I'm really happy with it. Uh, you know, the fact that it's it's more compact than the, uh, the, the horizontal ones, the PSP versions of, of this device just means that I can fit it more comfortably in my pocket as well. And as mentioned earlier, this does come with the Play Store, so if you've got any apps and games that you play on your mobile phone, for example, you can actually just download them all on here, so you've got everything all in one place, uh, which I feel is really good. Overall, the ergonomics of this device are really good. It's super comfortable to hold, uh, so compared to the 35.3V, um, I can play longer with this because I get less cramp. I've got like little grooves here that I can put my fingers just so it's more comfortable. Um, yeah, so it's great for long sessions of gaming. So uh, the battery life on this as well is eight hours, uh, which is amazing. It's got a massive battery in there. Uh, the shoulder buttons, uh, they're positioned in such a way that it's hard for you to catch the other one. I do prefer them to be stacked, but hey ho. 
And then, my friends, is it. So that is the Ambernic RG405V. If you are interested in picking one of these up, I will put the link for this uh, particular one with all the games in the description of this video. I just want to finish off by saying a huge thank you to Ambernic Selected for providing a sample for me to showcase in this video. And, of course, a massive thank you to you guys for coming back, watching this video, dropping me a like, and hopefully a subscribe as well. So I'm almost at 300 subscribers, which is mental. Never thought I'd come this far. Uh, but yeah, thank you. But until then, take care guys, stay safe, and I'll see you on the next one. Ta-ra!